As the tensions came to a boiling point in Southeast Asia, the people of the Mughal Empire, inspired in particular by stories of loss in Greek tragedies, began to demand a proactive approach to all that they perceived as threats to their way of life. The Ottomans grew bolder in their expansion, as did the Dutch, and the once content Mughal Empire saw the need to bare its fangs once more. Rapid industrialization, military modernization, and a desire to harken back to the earlier, more militaristic days of the empire saw a shift not just in approach, but also in identity. As their influence spread to previously uncharted parts of the world, they introduced themselves as the people of the Brahmaputra, a reference to the river upon whose banks the Harappans founded their first city. Over time, Brahmaputra was shortened and lost in translation among foreign tongues. As the Mississippians and Congo and Dutch and Moore spoke of these people of the subcontinent, and as the Greek writers sought to further romanticize the name for poetic and artistic purposes, the people of the subcontinent were born anew, and the golden age of the Mughal emperors came to a close. From the lecture series Mughalayazam by Par T. E. Leet. Hey everybody, it's Par E. Leet. Welcome back to our Humankind Forging India miniseries. As always, I am thoroughly excited to see exactly where our story takes us next, especially since there is a lot brewing. There is trouble to the east, there is trouble to the west, I can feel it in my bones, there is a war right around the corner, and I'm not actually sure if we're the ones who are going to be declaring it. I feel like the uh, Dutch over here, well, they're not the Dutch anymore, right? The uh, Persians over here now uh, might get a little upset about what went down on the uh, peninsula over here. And I get the feeling that the Ottomans are also, uh, well, brewing something. It ain't coffee. They're brewing something, though, and uh, I'm a little concerned about uh, a war on two fronts yet again. But we'll get to that, I'm sure, in uh, just a moment's time. There are a couple of things I want to address before we dive into the future. I want to deal with the uh, present and the past. That is to say, I want to touch on some historical uh, touch points. I want to touch on some anthropological touch points as well. If you're not interested in that kind of thing as we go around renaming our faith, renaming some of our cities, then feel free to use the timestamps down below to skip on ahead and dive into the gameplay. I'll have timestamps so you can kind of navigate as you uh, wish and choose, but I'm really excited to share with you some of the uh, uh, linguistic gymnastics, especially, that we'll be doing for some of the renaming over here. I'm, 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 I'm excited to share. So let's let's get to it, shall we? The first order of business, I brought this up a couple of sessions ago now. Uh, the first order of business is to rename our faith. I got some excellent suggestions. I had a very difficult time choosing one from the bunch. There were some great ideas and uh, it, it took me so long to finally pick one because I wanted to do some research on some of the terms that were being brought up uh, because it's something I'm a little less familiar with. Uh, so I'd like to, as you might know, I like to do my research before I, uh, you know, pick stuff out uh, at times like these. And I got this, again, I got many great suggestions and one stood out because it was a term that I was completely unfamiliar with, like 100% unfamiliar with, uh, just came across it and it so perfectly aligns with uh, everything we were saying about picking a faith, choosing one of the options from that drop down, et cetera, et cetera. So, so like it, it worked out uh, really nicely. And so I figure we go with that one. Uh, I might butcher the pronunciation. Uh, who am I kidding? I'm almost definitely going to butcher this pronunciation, so forgive me for that, but I will try my best. Uh, and I'll try and explain the concept as best as I can as well. Uh, the new name of our faith is... Bhartiyata. I'm just making sure I've got the uh, spelling right over here. Bhartiyata. Bhartiyata? 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 I'm not sure. A lot of the time with... Uh, uh, Hindi, at least, transliterations, the last A isn't really a pronounced A, it's like a, a remnant of the last consonant, so it, it that's how it kind of gets transliterated, like karma, for example, isn't actually karma, but the M sound at the end kind of has like a, like a hint of an A, you could say, I suppose, and that's why the A gets tossed in, karma isn't really karma, it's like karma, and, and that M becomes, anyway, sorry, I digress, so, um, for some reason, I feel like I've got this spelling wrong, and I apologize if that's the case. I, I'm pretty sure I copy-pasted right off the comment, but I can always course correct, but I'm close if I'm not right on the mark over here. Bhartiyata is, uh, it translates uh, into Indianness. Um, so just for some context, uh, India has many names. Um, one is, of course, India. We're familiar with that one. There is also Hindustan, which is a reference to the Indus Valley River. Uh, actually, one of my... Uh, 
this is, is one of those fun facts of history. So, uh, Hindustan, so Istan is a Persian suffix, which means place of. So, Afghanistan is place of the Afghan. Um, you know, Uzbekistan is place of the Uzbek. So, Istan is a suffix meaning place of. I love sharing this because I, I, I love this, uh, this definition and stuff. Uh, so, yeah, that's where Istan comes from. Um, so, Afghanistan, Uzbekistan, you know, Tajikistan, all those stans, right? So, uh, Hindustan uh, is often misconstrued uh, to be Hindu Istan, so place of the Hindu. That is not what Hindustan is. Hindustan is actually Indistan, place of the Indus Valley River. However, the Persian pronunciation of Indus was Hindus. There's the H at the beginning. So it was Hindustan, the place of the Indus River. Um, and, and, and so that it's, it's, so that, that's the, that's the, uh, the etymology of, of that name of India, Hindustan. There is the other term as well, of which I actually don't know the etymology, uh, but Bharat, if I'm pronouncing Bharat, I think I've got that right. Uh, that's another uh, term for India. So Bharat, Bharti, Bhartiyata, oh, I'm sorry, I'm really butchering this, aren't I? Bhartiyata is a, uh, is a reference, I can see the connection there. Bharat, Bharti means of the country, or of, I shouldn't say of the country, of India, because uh, of the country is a whole different word entirely. Don't get me started on that. We'll get to talking into Desi and Bidesi and Swadesi and those are whole other things. Fun terms to look up if you're curious. But yeah, Bharatiyata means Indianness and it is a sort of intentionally um, secular uh, set of ideologies and set of ideas as far as, um, you know, this kind of thing goes. Uh, as far as, you know, faith and, and the conversation around uh, well, everything that that conversation involves, rather. So I thought it was a rather poignant name suggestion. Again, I got lots of brilliant ones, but this is the one that kind of stood out as, you know, like like 110. If, if some of the suggestions were 100% aligned, this one felt 110% aligned. Uh, and so I, I thought we'd go with this one. I hope you guys like the name, though. If you are curious, this is an actual term. You can look it up and you can do some research on it. It's a, it's a very interesting kind of... Uh, uh, set of concepts and things like that. I thought it was fascinating at least, so I hope you like it as well. And uh, I hope it's uh, accurately, I hope you think as well that it's accurately representative of uh, what we were going for down over here. Anyway, that's plenty of time spent on renaming our faith, Bharti Yata. It's going to take me some time to get used to it, but I think it's quite cool um, as a uh, as a new name, you know? It's, I think it's uh, I think it's got a certain um, presence to it, Bharti Yata, as long as I can say it correctly. Anyway, that is our religion renamed um, and a little history lesson on the various names of, uh, of I guess, India, right? You got, again, I just want, I, it's a long way to come around to the etymology, I, I think at least, my understood etymology of, of, of this term over here, which is actually, yes, a real word as well. Bharati means uh, of India. I'm really, I should have I should have looked into where Bharat actually comes from. But, uh, but yeah, Bharat being the, the other name for India. Bharati mean, meaning Indian. Bharati Yatha meaning Indianness. I think it's a brilliant suggestion and i'm uh happy to adopt that for our playthrough uh okay sorry i i think i said the same thing like twice there i apologize i always kind of get caught up in wanting to be crystal clear in some of my explanations because uh i i often worry that i'm not crystal clear so i apologize for the repetition there moving on from naming our faith though we will now rename babylon i kind of i believe i gave this away last session this has been a long time coming but babylon over the time you know over the course of uh of, of history will have had its name butchered into a uh, Bombay and it's actually close enough to a modern day well Mumbai which was called Bombay under the uh, British you know um, rule I, I, I don't I don't know if it was precisely under the British Raj or if it was pre-British Raj as well but I know that the name was Bombay and then eventually post uh, independence it got renamed to Mumbai um, so yeah, Bombay from Babylon. We got really lucky actually that Babylon is, is close enough, close enough. Um, but uh, from close enough, we're going to go to very far off. And this is where those linguistic gymnastics come into play. Look, the thing about Harappa's location is that it's very close to, it's not on the mark, but it's very close to um, what in this era would be called Calcutta. Uh, and when we become Indian in the next era, we will rename it to Kolkata, we'll rename Bombay to Mumbai. Um, and and I, I kind of really want to rename Harappa to Calcutta. And I was like, well, how can I justify that? And uh, you know what? It's always good to stretch before performing 
gymnastics. So we're, 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 we're performing a huge stretch here while doing these, these uh, linguistic gymnastics. So bear with me here. But Harappa is going to be renamed Calcutta. And you might be going, well, okay, why? Um, so first of all, Calcutta was the capital of the British Raj from about 1770 something, 73, I think, 1773. Trying to remember my my number tricks to help me memorize dates. I think it was 1773 up until 1911 or so. Calcutta was the capital of the British Raj, and so you know it's a nice bit of history to touch on. One of my favorite um, stories of uh, of name butchering comes from uh, Calcutta. Actually, uh, I don't think this is actually true. Uh, I believe. I mean, I I highly doubt it's true. Actually, it's just hearsay. It's just a funny story. But basically, the uh, the story goes that a um, an Englishman was in the city of Calcutta and he was so enamored by its beauty and this, that, and the other thing. Um, again, I'm, I'm obviously paraphrasing here. I don't remember it word for word, but you'll get the gist of it. But he was enamored by how beautiful the city was and so he turned to, uh, you know, the closest person he could turn to. Uh, and the, the closest person he could turn to happened to be a roadside, uh, like, vegetable ven uh, vendor. And uh, he was, you know, chopping up a bunch of, like, vegetables and stuff, uh, getting ready for, you know, the market to, to, to sell them and all that. And, uh, and this Englishman turns to him and says, uh, you know, my good man, this is a, such a beautiful place. Uh, what is it called? And this roadside vegetable salesman doesn't understand what this guy is saying. So he assumed, you know, because he's literally got, like, vegetables that he's trying to sell. So the salesman assumed that he's asking when were these vegetables cut? Because that's a logical thing to ask a vegetable salesman, you know. I'm not being facetious here, I'm serious. Like, if I didn't understand what somebody was telling me, I would assume they're asking me about my product, right? So he, he's, he's like, oh, he's asking me when these vegetables were cut. And so he answered saying, oh, I cut them yesterday. Which in Bengali is Calcutta. So Calcutta became Calcutta. Uh, to this Englishman who was like, who was asking what the name of this place is, but got the answer for when those vegetables were cut. Uh, I think they're like variants of the story. I think in one, one version of the story, it's specifically cucumbers. I, I can't remember. But uh, anyway, it's, all, it's one of my favorite like uh, urban legends or, or like, you know, historical like myths or whatever you want to call it. I, I highly doubt that's true, right? Like, I don't think cities were named like that uh, under, 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 under British uh, <laughs> occupation and control. But uh, someone correct me if I'm wrong on the uh, the the fictionalness of the story. But anyway, it's one of my favorites. But then you go, well, hang on a second. How do we get that? How do we how do we make that make sense for for us? Well, we could go with the same story, of course. But the intro today was all about hearkening to the uh, past, making references to the past, and uh, the uh, linguistic gymnastics continue. Um, in Bengali. Uh, if I've got my translation even remotely correctly, you can say, so kal means yesterday, kata means cut. Um, but rather than use that as our point of reference, which would be too, I think, you know, too referential to the real world, <laughs> we're going to go with the uh, Bengali term or phrase, which I think roughly translates into uh, the, the talk of the past, the talk of yesterday. Kaler kotha, I'm butchering that, kaler kotha, would be roughly uh, the talk of the past, the talk of yesterday, literally, uh, which could also, you know, translate to Calcutta as we introduce ourselves to foreign entities and as, uh, you know, our Greek allies come by and have a hard time saying uh, the actual name of the city, it would eventually evolve and over time, you know, become Calcutta. Look, I, I said it was going to be gymnastics, right? But uh, I think it's fun. I also, I quite love the uh, original, again, story. But this to me is a bit somehow more grounded as we talk about a people who want to make references to their uh, past, to their uh, militaristic, uh, you know, history, uh, making references to, uh, to their history in other ways as well, such as, you know, a name that eventually evolves into a completely different name. Uh, anyway, I don't know. Maybe, I was, maybe I'm being silly about it. Uh, but hey, that's that's part of the fun, right? I hope you guys like these uh, name changes and their explanations. I think uh, Babylon to Bombay is like a is like Hariganga, right? We had a Huarikanga, and that was like over time the word became something else. Babylon over time the word became Bombay. Harappa I can see as uh, the people of the uh, Mughal Empire close to the end of that uh, of that era started calling it something else in reference to their history, and then that eventually 
evolved and changed into the British era's Calcutta. Am I spelling Calcutta correctly? I'm, <laughs> I'm so used to the uh, the new, like the modern day spelling, like Kolkata. I am sure I've got this, uh, I'm pretty, Cal Calcutta, Calcutta. Pretty sure it's a double, Cal yeah, Calcutta. I'm like 90% sure. Anyway, I might be wrong. If I am wrong, I'll correct it, but I'm, I'm like, now you know I'm 100% sure. Self-doubt is just just goes hand in hand with my existence, and that's all it is. I'm 100% sure Calcutta spelled correctly. Anyway, if you skip past the time lapse, you are now joining me for uh, actual gameplay as storytelling, and that beautiful musical track comes to a close. Let's go ahead and uh, hit that end turn button and see, yeah, what the future uh, holds for us. I'm I'm really really quite worried about uh, what we've done here. I feel like we've uh, we've become a little too aggressive, we've become a little too cocky perhaps. Uh, all of our military strength is uh, positioned against the Ottomans, and I just feel like, especially with the departure of this stack over here, I just feel like the uh, Persians are going to get really confident about their chances against us. Again, they do have these guys as vassals as well, so... I don't know, just not feeling very good about this. Just feeling a little nervous about how far we've pushed our luck. But hey, we're, uh, we'll see where it takes us. We'll see where it takes us. I'm like, I'd be willing to put money down that there's a war coming over here, you know? And, and not of my making. Well, <laughs> actually, I mean, I, it would be of my making, but, but not of my declaring, I should say. <laughs> it would 100% it would be of my making. Okay, so far, so good. So far, so good. I'm like... Nervous about pulling too far away from here. I don't know why. I was so confident. This is what happens when I take, uh, you know, when a session ends and I have time to think about my actions before the next session begins. This is what happens. I get very, um, it's that self-doubt kicking in again. I get very worried about how things might play out. There's a lot of oil here, isn't there? I mean, of course there is. I think I called it as well a few sessions ago, back when it was still question marks. I think I said, guaranteed these are all going to be oil, and uh, I was correct. I was correct. Now, I only have the Mongol hordes over here, and I think that's a part of what's making me nervous as well about this move, is that even though, again, with great confidence, I brought the Mongol horde all the way over, they're a relatively flimsy unit. These guys are in the latest era. They're in the same era as us, so guaranteed they have some pretty capable units as well. I wonder if Pastimnagar, rather than, you know what, I shouldn't have wasted that one turn that I just wasted on making the uh, Big Ben with it. I should go ahead and establish... Uh, more units here, I think. We could get some of these uh, musketeers out, I suppose. Wow, two pop, three turns. It will take some time. Okay, we could do that. Uh, we might be able to actually just afford them. We might just be able to pay for them, so that's an option. Uh, otherwise, the other option is to build train stations, actually, so that I could uh, more quickly bring soldiers over from front to front, if need be. Hmm. I think I'd rather just get the soldiers themselves for now. Though train stations will be coming very soon. Train stations are a huge game changer. They they absolutely change how everything flows. Oh, there's artillery as well. No, you know what? I think we need some musketeers first. Okay, 4,800. That's not too bad. I could pay for you right now. And then it would be some time before I could afford another one. I'm just wondering about rushing some of these guys out and joining... Well, not joining, but standing at least next to... The horde over here. So confident I am that war is brewing. These guys could hang tight over here as well. Oh, are you serious? War with the Ottomans... It'll come. It'll come. You know, in fact, I could probably declare it with just this one army over here and, uh, and get the job done. Truth be told, I could probably just declare it with this one army over here, upgrade these guys to musketeers and make our move. But uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna hold I'm gonna hold back on that upgrade until we have a little bit of extra money because I want to see if I have to rush some uh, some unit purchases here first. Like I hold I hold back on this upgrade until it's absolutely necessary until we're literally diving into a battle. You know. All right. Meanwhile, let's go ahead and send these settlers over as well. Uh, we're about to make landfall over here. Uh, maybe we'll actually settle over here and, and, and call it British Columbia, right? Uh, maybe we'll do that instead of uh, chase the, the original destination I was chasing. Send you over towards the Americas as well. Up over here, these guys. Again, I could swing them up towards Kirtan. 
got the guns. These guys will upgrade to the musketeers as well. Also equally expensive. But we can do that change up over here too. Let's go ahead and move you up. Oh, come on. I... We can't just take to the water? All right, fair enough. Come down here then. Why, why can't we just go into the water? Weird. Anyway, uh, we'll come up over here. We'll set up uh, for, for attacking Kirtan. And I think, yes, this six stack will be enough down over here. Meanwhile, these settlers are able to make landfall. Question is, where do we actually establish our... Uh, our city? 26 and 9, 27 and 4. Well, that's interesting. Oh, no, no, okay, no, that makes sense. I, I read the plus 4 and plus 9 backwards with the turn... Uh, the turn distribution, zero versus eight. Uh, we could establish the city right up over here. I think that makes sense, just uh, next to where we made landfall. I think that makes sense. We claim this uh, region. It'll give us easy attachments to some of these uh, territories as well. Yes, it'll take us a bit further over our city cap. Uh, it has been suggested that I merge Bombay and Calcutta, but uh, you can see why I'm hesitant to do that. Plus, I feel like Bombay could help us expand down in this direction, whereas uh, Calcutta can help us expand, you know, up through over here to generate more uh, money and, uh, and and all that. In fact, I wonder if I shouldn't do that right now. If I detach Aldenab, do I have enough? You know what? As much as I would like to do that, I think I need to save it. 11k we need to merge. Oh my god. 11,000, are you kidding me? Can't afford that right now. Uh, these guys, 12,000, 13,000. Oh my god. Okay, we got to save up some influence. Um, we're about to take another hit to our earning rate, but we got to save up some influence to, to allow some of this absorbing to happen at some point. 11k, 11k. Wow, yikes. Okay, yikes. <laughs> Big yikes. Uh, let's keep moving up over here. Keep exploring this coast. Not looking good. Up top over here. Keep moving down here. Let's go. I guess we're not going to get that, uh... That, uh... What's it called? What I'm looking for. The, uh, fame... The competitive deed for making landfall on a, uh, new, uh, continent. On an uninhabited continent. You hang tight over here for now. These guys. Where to move you? We've burnt this down. We've got our own uh, outpost here as well. I guess we move to burn this one down next, right? Honest. Yeah, I think so. No reason not to. I cannot take to the water right from here. Fair enough. Hold on, can I build a harbor? Because this allows us to, to at least get out, right? Oh, damn, there are significantly better spots up over here. I would be a fool not to take advantage of these spots. 33 and 3, 33 and 3, versus the 6. I would be a fool. 30s, 24s. Yeah, you know what, it just, it just doesn't make sense. That's that's too much of a, of a, of a miss over here. Uh, let's pop you down over here, I think. Draw, let's do it. Oh, look at that. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. And let's go ahead and get the uh, pearls over here as well. Helps our stability and helps our uh, money per trader on all cities. So from 995, we should go up to 1048. That's big. And this is also what, where our influence has been going, right? We've been actually spending it lately. Um, I could establish a harbor here as well before it's too late and I forget. Maybe pop you down. Where, where, where? I suppose over here is fine. I just love the... Uh, uh, it's it's so beautiful, the, 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 the art with all this stuff is absolutely gorgeous. I get a harbor down over here as well. Ooh, helps with science because of that adjacency, I think. And up over here as well, 33 and seven. Okay, well that's obviously the uh, the way to go then. Let's go for it. Beauty. I wonder if Calcutta, oh, you know what? We can actually attach Glande to, uh, to Calcutta. I, I was hoping to get the uh, oil tapped into first, but we're a ways away from that, I'm pretty sure. Oil is all the way at the, combust the combustion engine, sorry. It'll be some time before we get that, right? We're not even looking at mechanization yet. Because we want to get to uh, line formation as soon as possible. We're already right on military coordination for the howitzer, then line formation, 
<laughs> then maybe the uh, propeller or mechanization. We'll see which one. Uh, and then combustion. That's way too far away, right? Compared to the gains we could be making. Compared to the gains we could be making with our um, colonial riches, plus 10 money and plus 10 science per number of attached territories in the capital. We can always detach it later if we want to. It'll just be a handful of turns. The production over here is through the roof anyway, right? Hopefully this will help with the food as well. These grain saddles will help, but maybe this will help as well. So from 1048... And uh, 2033. Yeah, you know what? I'd say that was worth it. I'd say that was worth it. And then... Uh, Hecatompolos, we might be able to merge into uh, Calcutta when we take it, if we take it. We'll see. Let's 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 not let's not get ahead of ourselves. I've, I've done enough of that already. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. Keep moving. Uh, that's the turn done. Indeed, it is. Can't believe they took uh, Kawaijin from us. Now again, I wonder if uh, Calcutta extends its influence down over here, or if we leave that to the city down over here. Well, ooh, looks like we have a battle on our hands. All right. Deal with that in just a moment. Up over here first, if I take to the land here, is there a good spot here? There is a good spot here. 28 and 5. That's not a bad spot. Not a bad spot. How far away are we from... Where is the... Uh... I think we're quite far away. There, there's that one option that gives us um, colonies with the uh, fourth era... Um, infrastructure built as well, but I guess it's too far away. I can't remember now for the life of me where exactly it's located, but uh, you know what? I'm going to say it's irrelevant anyway. We're not going to be able to reach there in time. Let's go on over here. Let's go ahead and scooch over. Concerned about this battle. Over here. Bring these guys over as well. Again, they're going to kind of like lean upwards, right? Looks like we're... Uh... Oh no, I guess we could hit uh, Central America as well. One city up there, one city down here. One city in here. Oh my god, look at this. Oh my god. They do not want us here, these, uh, I'm assuming Mississippians. Yeah, they do not want us here at all. Yikes. You know what, I'm actually a little concerned about that. They were willing to go all the way from Cahokia, if I'm saying that right, all the way to here to burn this down. How am I supposed to put up, uh, like, <laughs> put up a fight? Without sending an, an army over, you know? That might be tougher than I'd uh, anticipated. Any better spots? No, this looks like a solid spot. Alright, fine. It is what it is. Uh, I was holding off on this because I'm fairly certain I know what it's going to be. The name of this city. Let's go ahead and found our city. Three population, 210 uh, production, and all the infrastructure from era 1 to 3. That's absolutely huge. Let's go for it. I'll take the extra production. There it is. London. I knew it. Beautiful. It's a large city. Pretty well built up. Again, it'll have all of this infrastructure. It's 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 no joke. I mean, it's a solid start, you know? it's It really is no joke. Uh, but as far as construction is concerned, uh, ruins. Oh, are there ruins already? Oh, I guess these are all ruins. Uh, a, a previous... Um, Independent people that were over here got wiped out, right? I guess it's uh, their ruins. But what do we want to do here? What do we want to do here? Oh, this is always difficult. See, these are the things that didn't get... Uh, these are all the uh, fourth era infrastructures that would have been built by that other thing I was talking about. A hamlet down over here, 37 and 6. It's not bad. It'll take zero turns to do, apparently. I don't think we need that much food. Uh, industry, if we go with uh, 17 over here... Try and make more money over here. I can put down a, uh, oh yeah, 27 and 7. Put this down over here and then establish some uh, market quarters around it, I suppose. Pop you down there. Yeah, so the reason why I was trying to get to where I was trying to get to in uh, Canada was because there is a London, Ontario. And I was hoping to establish London uh, around London, Ontario. But uh, we're nowhere near it, so it is what it is. <laughs> it is what it is. Um... These two, you know what, I, I know I was sending them up to deal with Kirtan. But I wonder if I shouldn't send them... Ah, oh, goddammit, we won't be able to hit Kirtan. What do you want now? Don't think they'll be declaring war anytime soon. 
But I don't think these two will be enough to deal with everything the Mississippians are able to throw at us either, you know? Because they're able to throw quite a bit. Actually, these two are, from a strength perspective. But from a numbers perspective, we'd be, we'd be done in. We'd be done in. You upgrade to a halberdiers, right? Yeah. Not really worth it. God damn. Um, makes things really difficult. It's like I, I wish I. You know what? Here. If anything, this will motivate me to finish the uh, the uh, Ottomans off quicker, because then I can move on. And I don't have to worry about them anymore. I think that's the. I think that's the solution we need. I think that's the solution we need. Now, what's this battle? Ooh. Yeah, see what I mean? They don't like what we've been up to. And I don't like what they're up to. This is... kind of scary. Okay, we're gonna retreat. We're gonna pull back from this. That is... No! Oh no! Oh no! <laughs> That's, uh... No, no. I was hoping that that would just be like a border skirmish or something, but of course not. We have a full-fledged war on our hands. That is not ideal. That is not ideal. Um, all the seeing it coming aside, that is just not ideal. Do I want to pay for these uh, musketeers over here? Bring them in alongside the uh, Mongol horde over here. These guys might be done for. These guys might actually be done for. If these guys give chase next turn, we'll have to fight and uh, we'll be destroyed. I can send these guys in to lose. So that's obviously not the right call. Let's, uh... Huh. Stay put for now. I don't like this. I don't like this at all. I saw this war coming and, and, and yet it's caught me off guard. Mongol hordes. Mongol hordes everywhere. Mongol hordes aren't what we need. We need significantly more powerful firepower over here. The cog, I don't think that's going to help. The man of war, nine turns it'll take. Or 8,000. Yikes. That's not going to help us. Five turns for a musketeer. And forever to actually make our way over. Establish them up over here, I suppose. But I wonder if it's not faster to go by sea. And, and make landfall at, at Alendarin if we establish a harbor over here, perhaps. Oh boy. Trouble's brewing, folks. <laughs> Trouble's not brewing. Trouble's here. End the turn there. Please don't chase me. Please don't chase me. <laughs> okay. It's not, it's not good. This is not good. What if I were to buy out a garrison? How much would it cost? 4,123. I'm thinking... If I do this attachment and establish the garrison somewhere down over here, right, we might be able to form up and, and hold Alandarin and get these musketeers at Alandarin as well. 4,123. The other option, the smarter option potentially, is to, yes, just recruit them up over here, you know? All right, here's what we're going to do. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and um, establish this harbor down over here I think makes sense the guy that was plus 12 right yeah down over here so when these soldiers arrive they'll be able to pop in over here four turns it'll take right 3671 hmm unfortunately we're not tapping into this oil by the time we do this attach over here yeah let's attach nice I'll take that expansionist star thank you very much Completely not my focus right now, but I'll take it. And let's go ahead and establish this down over here, I think. It's good high ground. There's only one way to uh, approach it. Oh, there might be two ways to approach it, but either way, they're both below. Right? If we get some gunners up over here, we'll be safe. Attempting to attach uh, Pinkoya as well, actually. Establish the uh, the garrison over here. Okay, kind of a, kind of a risk. Hmm... Or we could establish them up over here. Surrounded by high ground. Well, this is like a mesa, basically. There's there's some approach like angles of approach down over here, two of them. But overall it's not bad. 
Okay, you look, if there's ever a time to overspend our influence and, and never be able to absorb a city again, uh, it's now, I think. Go ahead and attach Pincoya as well. To bust some nugger. Go for it. Uh, this will then allow us to establish, yes, the garrison. Let's see, if I go down here... The only way in is up there, and I think up there as well. It's close to these guys, which is why it's kind of tempting. Can establish it right on these guys, give them that extra benefit, right? Because the uh, the garrison gives us um, plus one combat strength in combat for units in or adjacent to the district. It gives us that fortification as well, right? I'm, I'm wondering if these guys come up and they attack us, where might they come from and where might they attack from, right? All right, let's go ahead and... This might be a terrible idea. This might be a terrible idea. This is a nice spot as well. Alright, here. Pop you down there. Go ahead and... Rush you. Get these musketeers out over here next turn. I'm not going to spend that money on them. Um, I could actually establish... I don't think I can afford it, actually. If I go for buyout... Yeah, I won't be able to afford it. Maybe next turn? No, I won't be able to afford it. Well... That's where the second half of my plotting comes in. I think we need to focus a bit more on um, money generation. Go ahead and pull scientists over. Look at that huge drop in stability too. Okay, 1251. What else do we have? Uh, Bombay. Let's get... Let's get a scientist over. Alright. Calcutta. We're already topped up. Mahenjadaro up over here. We can get three more. Why don't we get uh, these three over? Okay, all right. We're getting there. We're getting there. Slowly but surely. Bear with me here, folks. Hey, Gunga, we have room for one more. Get one of you involved. Cool. 1,300. Looking good. Asher, get you over here. 1,315. Nineveh, you're topped up already. What else do we have? London. London, London. Let's go ahead and do that. Cool. And why don't we establish some of these... Oh, real. Plus five, plus five. Uh, that's the best you got. Okay, okay. It'll help us with growth, but that's not really my focus right now. It really is money. Taxation office. 22 turns it'll take, though. We don't have that kind of time for, for this urgent money-making. Plus fives. Zero turns, it says. Not what it actually means. Uh, sure, why don't we put this down over here? 43 food over there. Alright, cool. Okay. Is that really all of our cities? I guess so. Just trying to make as much money as possible, as quickly as possible, to try and get more troops out, right? Because that, that might this might allow us to get a second. Well, it depends. If a battle kicks off over here, then we might not be able to uh, get those recruits down here. From Bustum Nugger. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> What's going on in London? The distant metropolis. Founding cities across your own continent is a challenging endeavor, but still much simpler than founding them on foreign shores. Seasons, climate, wildlife, staple foods, everything is alien, not least a population drawn largely from local stock. Now that you find yourself in such a position, with the Empire fragmented across different land masses, you must decide your outlook on such new cities. Well, we certainly don't have the influence to do anything here, but let's see the details. Colonizations, vassal colonies, far-flung cities should understand they work for the homeland or naturalized colonies. New cities and their citizens, wherever they may be, are the equals of the old ones. So either we get harmonious on captured cities, giving us 25 stability for 10 turns when it happens, or subservient on captured cities for 10 turns, giving us more money and more industry. Huh. Vassal colonies, I think, makes most sense based on our decisions thus far. But again, we do not have the influence for it, so it's a decision that'll have to wait. You're making your way over. I mean, I wonder if we should just ignore Honest and head towards this uh, war instead, you know? Could we establish trains from Hariganga all the way to this front? Two turns. It'll take two turns. Don't necessarily want to rush it. If 
I can get up here. Oh my god. Eight, nine turns. This will take us, what, 15 turns? This will take us how long? 10-ish turns, 10, 11 turns. Alright, I'm just trying to figure out the fastest way, because if I have to go through these two uh, ships, I have to fight these guys. I can try and bring them both down over here right now. Right, move past them. Take to the land over here. And then take a train. From here. We'd have to establish one here. We'd have to establish one here. Here. Oh god, that's a long way to go. We can get pretty far pretty quickly. But I just wonder about actually building these uh, these things. Let's see. Train station. If I establish you right here. Kind of makes sense, right? You, you come off the, the dock, you, you get onto the train right away. You can only do one per territory. You can only do one per territory. See, you have to be careful about where you place it. I think this is reasonable. I mean, these territories will have their own up over here and, and it'll connect nicely enough. Yeah, I think this is reasonable. Let's go ahead and pop you down over here. I hope I don't live to regret this. Put you up top, two turns it'll take. That's not too bad. And then another two turns... So you go from there over to where do we put our next one down. The thing about these is that units have to travel, or armies have to travel from station to station. They can't get off in between. That's not how that works. Uh, we could get a hill station up over here. I suppose that'd be uh, nice. Too bad we already have Big Ben up over here. Would have been, actually been quite nice. We get the station down right next to Big Ben over here. Get a fortification or something over here to block the pass. It's just very close, you know? Seems pointless in that way. Well, why don't we go ahead and establish this up over here instead, actually? Because then coming from here to here will be a lot faster. And gives us some extra industry as well, apparently. Well, actually, that's if I put you down here. Bumping these guys up. Huh. Sure. The train station to the two uh, masjids. Right, so we do that. And then the next train station... Oh, that's over here. Oh, no, 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 no. No, we can't do that one. Didn't realize we are crossing over the territory. So this one will have to go up over here. Because the one for this territory, I would like further along. I'm thinking like all the way over here even. Right? Literally planning my entire infrastructure right now. <laughs> to respond to this war declaration. So from there, you'd be able to take the train over to... All the way to here and then all the way to here and then Bombay would take four turns to make its train station all the way to where? all the way to here I'm thinking gets you up there, I don't want to get rid of our uh, our structure here I don't want to go down this way either I think I'd rather here because then we won't get... The, if, our, if an army pops up over here, it could easily be surrounded by people on the high ground, right? So let's go ahead and put this down over here. Yes. Cool. That'll be after the musketeers, which I'm starting to wonder if uh, I should do it the other way around. Four turns. In four turns, these guys should be up over here and able to make their way across. So that's, I, that's what I'm tr trying to time towards. Up over there, right? Up over there. Down over here, we'd be able to go this way. Bombay itself, actually, you know what? Why don't we go ahead and establish the train station down over here, right next to the... Nah, it'll damage stuff. I was thinking right next to the uh, harbor again. We could establish it up over here. Close enough to the harbor. About as far as you can get. Yeah, sure. Let's build this one... First, I'm thinking. Just check here. I want to make sure I've got the right one. Yeah. Stop shoot there. Go ahead and move you up to there. Move you up to there. Cool. Because uh, that way, yeah, basically what I'm thinking is these armies will be able to make their way all the way to here. And then they can take this harbor and and, and ship on over to, to the uh, peninsula here. Wow. That is... Uh, this is what I like about this game, is that there's a there's this strategic uh, layer to it with these train stations and stuff down the line. It's like, this entire last 10 minutes or so was, was plotting, 
train tracks basically to make sure we have a chance in this war. I feel bad for these guys. I might lose this army. I might lose that army. How deep do we want to journey? I'm a little concerned about like building a city too close to these guys, actually. Let's go further along. Oh, of course. Of course. I just want to keep my distance, because these guys are terrifying. They're, they're no joke. They're really no joke. Alright, what's next? These guys, let's pull you over. Bring these guys over this way. Again, Central and, and South America with these guys, right? Keep moving if you can. Down over here. Right, we were like gonna go to war with the uh, Ottomans sooner rather than later, right? Was, uh, was my thinking here. I wonder if... If I shouldn't make uh, train stations at like Asher and stuff as well. Alright, Gunga, we could attach. Well, we can't afford it actually. But if I were to build train stations, three turns it would take. Just thinking about moving these guys uh, over to that side as well. And then, you know, allowing the Ottomans to declare war on us as well as we're out of position. Because that's how that'll work, knowing my luck. Oh, hello. Some coffee over here. Good stuff, good stuff. Okay. Moment of truth. I need to... Jeez. <laughs> Literally across the globe over here. I gotta, I gotta pull back over here. With 15 market quarters, you'll soon be using stacks of banknotes to heat their houses. These guys coming in from both sides. I'm not liking it. I'm not liking it. At least we're off of the river over here, right? So we're not going to suffer that penalty. These guys up top over here. I mean, we could kick this battle off ourselves. We are the weaker force, though. We are the weaker force. We can bring the uh, Mongol horde down, just strength in numbers, I suppose. Bustum Nugger, if we go ahead and develop another unit of musketeers. Oh no, are you kidding me? We are 60 gold short of being able to rush it. 60 gold short. Are you... Are you kidding me right now? All it would have taken is a couple more people generating wealth. That's all it would have taken, and we would have had one more musketeer down over here. God damn, that is that is my luck. Okay, what if we don't go with the musketeer? What if we go with something else? What if we go with the uh, the gudgeon? <laughs> Significantly more expensive. You are also pricey. We can afford some halberdiers. I don't know if they'd be worth it. Got some heavy infantry over here. Or oh, sorry, great swordsman over here. Easy enough to I think uh, wipe out. It's these triple veterancy knights that concern me. That's what concerns me. If we engage you, we'd be first to go. We should be able to eliminate this unit and prevent these guys from deploying, netting us the victory. Right? That should, in theory, work out. And if I bring the, uh, the hordes down as well, they'll definitely help. You know what I just realized? I forgot to fight this fight. Foolish me, I forgot to fight this battle. Cost myself a turn there. Pass this way up over here, that takes... Eight turns. We still get stuck with our movement over here. Alright, fine, let's go ahead and do this battle first. Oh no, it's a war declaration. Now's not the time, I, I can't fight a war on two fronts, not like this. No. Nope. Make my way over. At least I don't have to be upset about not fighting that battle uh, last time. They got very lucky with Honest over here. London, what do we have? Money. Now yeah, we could make some more money over here. Um, I'm thinking that might be the right call, actually. Let's make that paper, right? Population's gonna continue to grow. Go ahead and establish you up over here. Plus fives. A lot of plus nines, but I wanna get... Uh, why can I not establish this up over here? That's what's throwing me off. Adjacent to the uh, harbor. A little thrown off by that. Establish you over here. Got to keep an eye on stability as well, though, right? Uh, again, there's a lot of infrastructure helping with stability, so that's cool. But I uh, just got to keep an eye on it as well. Six idle armies. Let's move you over this way. See what else uh, this land holds for us. Just try and get away from the uh, very aggressive Mississippians over here. I do wonder if, like, the Mississauga or the... Uh, 
Ottawa or whatever are, are in the game as well. I'm curious. And I guess we might find out. I mean, it's not like they've been generated. It's not like it's not like the Mississippi is here. So I don't know why I'm expecting uh, geographic accuracy with like the, the Mississauga and the Ottawa and stuff. But just thinking out loud as we approach the area, I guess. Keep moving over here. Who else do we have? You over here. It's like on the one hand, I'm gearing up for war against the Ottomans, but on the other, I'm gearing up for uh, avoiding that war, you know? It's kind of taking this terrible two-pronged approach. We could raise another army entirely that we'll eventually disband. We could do that. Oh man, I just, I don't know. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm at a loss, I'm at a loss. I'm at a loss. All right, I think this is the right call. If we can eliminate these guys right away by deploying up there and down here, fire away with all of our musketeers. These guys won't stand a chance. They won't be able to deploy their reinforcements and they will take a hit to their war support because of that defeat. And we'll take a nice little bump to ours, which might be all we need uh, right now. I don't think it's safe to attack with these uh, Mongol hordes over here, but it might be safe to come down over here and actually strike with them? No, because we don't want to deploy like this. All right, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and do this, leaving these Mongol hordes free to move as they wish. Unfortunately, abandoning our uh, our spot over here, but actually, can you guys get down over here? You can't. You cannot. All right, if we do engage you like this, then... They'll pop in as reinforcements. I mean, that's that's an option. Perfectly fine by me. I can't deploy along here, though. Don't know if I'll need to. We'll be the attackers, so we should move first. We should get our reinforcements out. We should be able to eliminate these guys, no problem. Unless... If they deploy down here, we might be in trouble, because they'll block our reinforcements from coming through. They're just the one unit, so they might actually protect their flag instead. But the Mongol hordes and the musketeers should be able to finish these guys off. Alright, taking a risk, but uh, what's life without risks, as I like to say. Bring the Mongol horde down over here. They're, you know what? They're actually probably going to retreat. That's probably what's actually going to happen. What I should have done is I should have attacked with these guys, waited for the retreat, and then hit with the Mongol horde. But you know what? That's fine. It is absolutely fine. Could I... Could I actually defeat this army? Because right now they're at sea. Our guns will be able to fire at them before they make landfall. If we deploy across the board over here, we'd be able to prevent them from deploying anywhere outside of the river and the uh, the coastway up over there, right? They'd have to move quite far to deploy, and then they'd get stuck as they disembark. So that's that helps me. I could move my Mongol hordes to block these spots off as well, actually. Oh, you know, I might I might need to do this. I think I need to pull the trigger on this right here, right now. Do I, Actually, do I send these guys down there, or do I send these guys over instead? I guess I can't send these guys in. That's kind of weird. Knowing my luck, I won't be able to attack with these guys either. Even though the game says I can, even though it shows me the, ba the battle icon and everything. Watch, it won't work out. Only one way to find out, I guess. I worry about reinforcements that are tucked away. But... Hey, we'll deal with them if we have to. Let's go. These guys might actually retreat as well. There it is. Shouldn't be surprised. Okay, well, you know what? You know what? For for all the uh, tension that was brewing, <laughs> for all this heartache I'm feeling right now, that actually worked out quite well for us. That... The, <sighs> It's not over yet. It really is not over yet. That, that's this is stressing me out, man. I apologize for the sudden slowdown in uh, in in turn completion rate, but this is stressing me out. And those uh, developing the, uh, the the train stations was definitely time consuming, but uh, worth it, I think. Not just right now, but in the future as well. Once Buschimnagar is able to establish its own stations, we'll be able to go from front to front, you know, within moments, within a turn, even potentially. That's this turn done. Oh man. The first train stations link up. Connect distant lands. Transfer goods and travelers at unthinkable speeds. Hopefully the lounge car is well stocked. 
All right. I believe that's a uh, uh, thing as well. I keep forgetting the name of them. Competitive Deed as well. Is it not? Huh. Maybe not. Oh, the Greeks are known as a traitor. Um, now, the, the Competitive Deed is actually when two train stations do link up, which that narration claimed has happened, but there there aren't two train stations to link up just quite yet, so that that is that is a lie, I assume. Once this second one is built, uh, where, up over here, right? Or, we got this one over here, where's the next one being built? Up over, yeah, here I thought, yeah. Uh, so once that's built, we'll have the uh, train stations link up. God, it's gonna take a long time to get up over here. Let's go. Not the end of the world. Worst case scenario, if the war is done by the time they reach the train station, they can loop back and hit uh, Ekatompolos, right? So it uh, it works out. <laughs> It'll work out fine. All right, London, what to do with you? Making a decent bit of money. Make some more money, perhaps? 13. Don't mind if I do. I wonder if there's something better to build over here. Nope. Nope. Money it is. Let's go. There's a guy just peacefully chilling over here. You guys, eventually, we might be able to assimilate and just absorb, right? Any other assimilations we do these days will just lead to uh, absorptions. We don't have... We're well past our city cap already. What else do you hold for me? What else do you hold for me? Got some oil up over here. Okay, good stuff. I should cons consistently be checking as well for uh, good spots to establish a city. None yet. Which is very accurate of... Uh, <laughs> the northern parts of Canada. Alright, what to do here now? These guys have actually pushed in. Can I seriously not attack from up over here? I have like the slightest advantage. I guess I can't engage because even though I can shoot at them, even though once the battle begins I'd be able to shoot at them, the game won't let me do it. I could... I could engage them. Disembark. No, see, because then I suppose I could deploy my reinforcements up over here. Fire from up on high, fire from up there as well. Just plug this gap, basically, with our ship and, uh, and, and, and try and defeat them that way. They can't retreat again, right? And this might tip the war in our favor right off the bat over here. And then these guys could go up over here and finish these guys off because they can't retreat either. If I attack this way, oh, I can't, right? So it would be this way, we'd plug this gap, they'd be forced to deploy back there. We'd be able to fire from here, because we'd be deploying first. How many guns do we have over here, actually? Two sets of guns, and then two sets of halberdiers. Fair enough. Bust Jim Nugger. We could rush this guy out now, right? We'd have another musketeer here then, able to deploy and hold the coast as we gun down their ships. Oh, they'll probably get those boats as reinforcement. At least one. I'm glad I noticed that. Just some knights. Again, they'll have to actually make landfall first. These guys would very easily get involved, but that's just a quadrarine, so I don't think I have to worry about that. Okay, fair enough. Though, actually, I say that, but it means that they can actually um, surround our ship in the middle over here and, 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 and down it, right? Which is obviously not ideal. We'd have to very quickly make landfall, and that would get rid of the plug over here, which might be worth it, if, especially if I actually buy this unit of musketeers out. Now, it's either that or buy this train station out, but there's no rush really on the train station considering where our uh, army down here is. Yeah, this might have been a bit wasteful. Rushing these train stations might have been a bit wasteful. I didn't realize opportunity would fall on my lap quite like this though. That's been, uh, that's been a pleasant surprise. What about a howitzer? What about a howitzer? Or how about a howitzer, I should say. Because <laughs> it's a fairly capable unit. And cause a fair bit of damage. It'll take six turns, though. Six turns. That's from Bombay. What about Buster Nugger? How long will it take over here? Four turns. Four turns. Can I afford to wait four turns? If I rush this musketeer out and then get the uh, howitzer coming, 6,249. Next turn. If I don't rush the musketeers out, then next turn I'd be able to actually buy out the howitzer instead, which is an option as well, of course. Oh, man. Again, folks, I do apologize for, uh, for what might be perceived as overthinking, but I assure you it is not. 
Uh, I'm not playing on like the easiest difficulty or anything over here. If I make a mistake and I lose one or both of these armies in a defeat, um, we might see our empire crumble. <laughs> we, we might see quite a bit of it crumble, actually. So uh, I, I know it might seem like I'm overthinking some of these things, but uh, but there are things to worry about here, and uh, and uh, and I'd much rather worry about them now than after when it's too late. But on the topic of late, folks, I fear this episode might be running a little late itself, not in its release, but in how long it's been going. I do think this is where we're going to call it, because um, a cliffhanger is always a beautiful thing, isn't it? As we establish our garrisons on these cliffs, a cliffhanger is always a beautiful thing. I think we'll dive into this battle right at the beginning of next session. I think we'll uh, push the Persians back. I think we'll turn this war right around. Uh, we'll gain that war support. We'll crush theirs. And honestly, we just have to hold the line. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Okay. Well, that's not promising. Folks, I hope you enjoyed today's session. If you did, you know what to do. Let me know down below. As always, I am open to all sorts of thoughts, opinions, feedback, whatever it might be, whether it's about the content or it's about our approach in terms of uh, the actual you know, gameplay moves themselves. Uh, so feel free to leave them in the comments down below. But of course, if you are enjoying the series and if you would like to see more humankind on the channel, don't hesitate to let me know by leaving that like and that comment down below. It does make a very, very big difference in uh, how I approach content on the channel, what I do, what I don't do, how I go about doing what I go about doing. Um, it's, uh, it's big. I'm uh, rambling now because I'm still thinking about our current situation. It's nerve-wracking. It's nerve-wracking. We can net a couple of victories over here, but then we've got this, like, seven stack making its way in. Well... We'll see how it plays out next time. Folks, again, I hope you had a good time. As always, a massive thanks goes out to all of the channel members and patrons who've been supporting the channel on a monthly basis. Y'all keep us alive and running smoothly. And of course, a big old thanks goes out to each and every one of you for watching. Until next time. Cheers.